Timothée Chalamet, the Hollywood actor, as his name suggests, speaks French. In fact, he is French on his dad's side, but was raised in the US. Alors, what can we, as French learners, learn from the French of Timothée Chalamet? Does having a French parent mean you grow up speaking both languages perfectly? Well, let's find out. Du coup, si vous êtes prêts, allez, c'est parti. Salut tout le monde and welcome back to French in Plain Sight. Moi, c'est Alex, and in this series on native English-speaking celebrities that also speak French, I aim to help you, as an English-speaking French learner, not only learn new words, expressions and grammar, but also see that progrès is more important than perfection when speaking a foreign language. I do this by breaking down the good things celebrities say and how they say them, as well as the mistakes they make. This week is the turn of Timothée Chalamet, because in the comments of so many previous videos, you guys have asked me to take a look at his French. So let's watch the first clip from an interview in which he's talking about the film Interstellar. And for all the French parts, there are subtitles available should you want to turn them on. Je confie mes enfants, Donald. Timothée Chalamet réalise alors son rêve de devenir acteur. C'est émouvant parce que ça, c'est un de mes films préférés, Interstellar, même aujourd'hui. De travailler avec Matthew McConaughey dans cette scène et sur le film. C'est vraiment un géant d'acting aux états unis Et cette scène, c'est émouvant aussi parce que, même si c'était pas mon père dans ma vie vraie, bien sûr, il a vraiment joué un rôle comme ça pour moi dans, dans le commencement de ma carrière. Il m'appelait souvent... Euh... Alors, there are beaucoup de choses in that clip that I like about his French. Par exemple, he uses a lovely adjective to describe the scene he's just watched back. Émouvant, the translation of moving. Useful for the next time I want to avoid using intéressant, which is probably the most said adjective among French learners, including myself. What about you? Do you say intéressant an awful lot? C'est émouvant parce que ça c'est un de mes films préférés, Interstellar, même aujourd'hui. Ensuite, he says un de mes films préférés, même aujourd'hui. Un de mes films préférés, même aujourd'hui. Now it might not be super easy to understand him because of the way he articulates it, but that's what he's saying. He's contracting un de mes into un de mes. And me, and that's really hard to get first time round. Un de mes films préférés est installé même aujourd'hui. And then at the end of the sentence, he says même aujourd'hui, which can mean both even today or still today. Même is a nice little word you can use like that to give your French a nice natural sound. Then, and I want your feedback in the comments on this because he's so into the French flow that he starts to say Matthew McConaughey's name in French, but stops himself and switches to English. De travailler avec Matthew McConaughey dans cette scène et sur le film. <laughs> Have you got to this stage where you do that yet? Do you carry on and say an English name in French with a French pronunciation? Or do you say it in English? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, here's that whole clip again. Je confie mes enfants, Donald. Timothée Chalamet réalise alors son rêve de devenir acteur. C'est émouvant parce que ça, c'est un de mes films préférés, Interstellar, même aujourd'hui. De travailler avec Matthew McConaughey dans cette scène et sur le film, c'est vraiment un géant d'acting aux états unis Et cette scène, c'est émouvant aussi parce que, même si c'était pas mon père dans ma vie vraie, bien sûr, il a vraiment joué un rôle comme ça pour moi dans, dans le commencement de ma carrière. Il m'appelait souvent... Euh... Alors, on to the next clip. There's a lot of franglais in modern day French. It's understood and accepted by so many, so often not considered a mistake. But here, the interview doesn't let a particular piece of franglais slip by uncorrected that I'd not heard before. See if you pick it out. Ça te fait peur de, de dire maintenant faut durer Non, parce que Dune, c'est un film énorme. Mais là, le film que je viens de finir hein, aux états unis en Kentucky, Ohio, c'était tout petit. Là, j'ai travaillé sur un film en Angleterre, Willy Wonka, ouais, qui Tu passes d'un registre énorme. à l'autre. Oui, c'est ça. Alors, ce que j'expecte, euh, si ça se dit comme ça... Ce que j'attends. Ce que j'attends, plutôt. C'est pas de... Moi, je cherche un, un sentiment, pas une réalité. Bien. C'est ça. J'adore cette phrase. Mm -hmm. On continue. How'd you do? Did you pick up on it? Well, he said, ce que j'expecte. And then, before he could say what he expects, he was corrected. Ce que j'attends is the correct phrase because the verb expecter doesn't exist in French and it's not one that has been uh, normalized in Franglais. Not yet, anyway. Ce que j'expecte, euh, si ça se dit comme ça. Ce que j'attends. Ce que j'attends, plutôt. C'est pas de... Moi, je cherche un, un sentiment, pas une réalité. The correct verb is attendre, which we learn means to wait. But maybe you can see how waiting and expecting are related. There's also the verb s'attendre, which is usually the first one that comes up when looking up expects translation. But attendre is valid too, and it's easier for English speakers. Moi, je cherche un, un sentiment, pas une réalité. For the next good thing about Timothée's French, I'm going to briefly take you back to the first clip. It'll help you if you struggle with remembering to use C versus il est or elle est. It's only a little thing, but it's powerful. Let's watch. Et cette scène, c'est émouvant aussi parce que, même si c'était pas mon père dans ma vie vraie, bien sûr, 
Il a vraiment joué un rôle comme ça pour moi dans, dans le commencement de ma carrière. Il m'appelait souvent. Euh... First of all, depending on where you are in your French journey, it might be more normal for you to say noun plus et plus adjective. And the adjective can take its masculine or feminine form depending on the gender of the noun. In that case, it would look more correct if it was cette scène est émouvante with that t at the end. And indeed, it would still be correct. However, Timothée says cette scène, pause, c'est émouvant. Why does he do this? Well, there's two possibilities in my opinion. One is that it's a tendency in spoken French. You put a noun and you put C and then the masculine form of the adjective because C, the subject pronoun C is gender neutral. So we use the masculine form of adjectives. This is incredibly common. And if you want to speak French like the natives, I recommend you start doing it. Second, there is a difference in the meanings of cette scène est émouvante and cette scène c'est émouvant. I won't go too deep into it here, But to my knowledge, cette scène est émouvante refers directly to the scene itself being moving. And cette scène c'est émouvant is much more general. The feeling from watching the scene and, for example, the feeling he gets from memories of making the film. I'm releasing a video soon on when to use C and when to use il or elle est, which is very, very relevant to this. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel in order to not miss that when it comes out. Et cette scène c'est émouvant aussi parce que, même si c'était pas mon père dans ma vie vraie, bien sûr, il a vraiment joué un rôle comme ça pour moi dans, dans le commencement de ma carrière. Il m'appelait souvent... Euh... But the difference is subtle and he wouldn't have created any confusion whatsoever had he said cette scène est émouvante. So it helps you if you don't like changing the form of the adjective because if you just whack C in there after the noun, you can use the masculine form, which is what most of us learn first of all. The next mistake he makes, much like with ce que j'expect, comes from translating word for word from English. <laughs> J'avais juste fini les Oscars et c'était un rôle, c'était un monde. À la fin, je me sentais Prince King Henry. Au début, je, pour cette raison, je voulais faire le rôle parce que je me sentais assez confortable après les Oscars. Je me suis dit, allez, tout de suite, on y va. Vas-y, on y va. Now the host didn't pick him up on this one because it's not as serious as j'expect, but I can tell immediately that it's a word-for-word -word translation from English. He says, j'avais juste fini les Oscars. J'avais juste fini les Oscars. He's trying to say, I had just finished the Oscars. And it's only really one word away from conveying the message he intended. J'avais fini les Oscars means I had finished the Oscars, word for word. But the French wouldn't use juste in this sentence to mean recently, even though juste translates to just in a lot of cases. J'avais juste fini les Oscars does not convey this recency. To get across the point that it was recent, you would use the special construction of je venais de finir les Oscars, je venais de finir les Oscars, which is specifically for I had just. For I just or I have just, you put venir in the present instead of the imparfait. Je viens de finir. J'avais juste fini les Oscars et c'était un rôle, c'était un monde. À la fin, je me sentais Prince King Henry. Au début, c'est pour cette raison que je voulais faire le rôle parce que je me sentais assez confortable après les Oscars. Je me suis dit, allez, tout de suite, on y va. Vas-y, on, on y va. va. J'adore ça, because it's something easy to pick up in your own spoken French. It's really common in everyday French, and it's not a word-for-word -word translation from English. It always feels good to retain those ones. This sort of mistake is a sign that English is far and away his most proficient language. Oh, and by the way, By picking out these mistakes, I'm trying to help you avoid making them yourself and also have fun analyzing sentences to understand how they came about. It's not in any way to put him down. And just to finish up on this sentence, a more natural one for the French to say would be something like Je venais de participer à la cérémonie des Oscars. But Timothée got his point across with finir just fine in my opinion. The next thing that Timothée demonstrates really well is how French pronunciation puts the most emphasis on the end of a word, on the final syllable. Listen out to how he pronounces these words In the next clip. Vous avez dit qu'on y a l'enthousiasme pour le film. Ça, c'est extraordinaire. Et surtout dans les coins du monde, où, comme Venise et à Paris, où tu vois, pour le boulot de faire ça, ça je dois me convaincre que, que je travaille. Qu'est-ce que tu as appris de tout ça Qu'il faut apprécier le moment, mais que tout le monde est humain. Franchement, que tout le monde est humain. Mais moi, j'essaie vraiment, surtout au milieu où je suis maintenant, de gérer ma vie avec du positivité, avec l'optimisme, avec un gratitude avec un, un, un dose de, cyni de cynisme, ouais. mais il faut apprécier le moment, il faut apprécier notre vie. It's more obvious on those words ending in asthma and isme, but it's still true of positivité. 
And this is a hallmark of French pronunciation. So if you struggle with imitating the sound of French words, focus on putting more stress or more weight at the end of it. In English, we tend to put the stress earlier in the word. Positivity, enthusiasm, optimism, cynicism. But this thing of putting the weight at the end of the word in French is also particularly true with words ending in T-I-O-N or sion. Organisation, réalisation, recommandation, félicitation. Whereas in English, we put the stress in the middle or at the start, the French are more consistent in putting it at the end. Organisation, realisation, recommendation, congratulations. So it's nice that Timothée demonstrates this difference so clearly for us. Let's hear it again. You said that there is the enthusiasm for the film. That's extraordinary, especially in the coins of the world, like Venice and Paris, where you see it for the job to do that. I'm going to convince you that I work. What have you learned from all this? That you have to appreciate the moment, but that everyone is human. Honestly, that everyone is human. Mais moi, j'essaie vraiment, surtout au milieu où je suis maintenant, de gérer ma vie avec du positivité, avec l'optimisme, l'optimisme, avec une gratitude, avec un 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 dose de cynisme. Ouais. Mais il faut apprécier le moment, il faut apprécier notre vie. Alors, in this next one, Timothée, through making a mistake, gives me a great opportunity to teach you a very useful everyday French construction. Let's watch. En quoi t'es encore français? En grandissant, euh, j'apprécie plus de plus mon côté français qui est Euh, encourage hein, à savourer, à discuter, à échanger, à réfléchir. À changer, à réfléchir. En grandissant, j'apprécie plus de plus mon côté français. He's trying to say, as I grow up, I appreciate my French side more and more. When he says plus de plus, it should be de plus en plus. De plus en plus. J'apprécie de plus en plus mon côté français. So, De before the first and then en before the second. The cool thing about this construction is that it's reusable with any comparative. De moins en moins, less and less. De mieux en mieux, better and better. De pire en pire, worse and worse. And whereas in English we have words like easier, you can't do that in French, you have to say plus facile and plus difficile, but this fits the format as well. So c'est de plus en plus facile, it's easier and easier. Or c'est de moins en moins difficile. It's less and less difficult. En quoi t'es encore français? En grandissant, euh, j'apprécie plus de plus mon côté français qui est, euh, encourage à savourer, à discuter, à échanger, à réfléchir. À changer, à réfléchir. I love the way Timothée's French flows so naturally. He definitely has picked that up perfectly, at least to my ears, which is normal since he's been speaking since he was a child. But as is clear, he makes a lot of small mistakes like getting the gender of nouns wrong and mistranslating things from English. This isn't obvious at all when you're beginner or intermediate. You can easily hear someone's flow and pronunciation and think they're perfect when often that's not the case. So I hope with these videos, you take confidence in your own ability, knowing that celebrities do interviews and make tons of mistakes, but in the grand scheme of things, they hardly matter at all. Focus on progrès pas perfection for your own French and appreciate all the little steps forward you make. Merci beaucoup to Timothée Chalamet for educating so many of us through both what you say and how you say it. J'adore son jeu d'acteur, j'adore ses films en général. Du coup, what would your score for Timothée's French be out of 20 according to your own criteria? Let me know in the comments and let's start the conversation. By the way, get your free copy of my guide to speaking French with more confidence via a link down in the description of the video, as well as a link to the original interview with Timothée if you're curious. Oh, and don't forget to leave a like, please, and subscribe to the channel. A très bientôt pour une autre vidéo. Ciao, ciao.